how's, how's the house, and how's it helped, like, the band, or has it not helped the band? Currently, it needs a little bit of um, love and affection, because we had a, a, a bit of a party there on Saturday, so... Uh... Yeah, no, it's made us self, entirely self-sufficient. Um, at least in the writing of the record, it meant that um, it was much more of a private experience than writing the first record. It was more... It meant that nobody, there, were, there wasn't really any distraction or interference, so we could play any time of the day. Um, it just meant it was much more of a fluid process to write the record. Because we weren't kind of going into a practice room and having to pay for a specific amount of time. So it just it meant we could write when we felt like it. That's cool. So even if that's four in the morning or. Yeah. Yeah. And that was quite often that happened. Sometimes. Sometimes, <laughs> yeah, sometimes we get, get pretty late. Yeah. Jimmy was pretty, you were pretty nocturnal, weren't you? Yeah. Well, was good. As were you. And I'd, I'd, I'd come down at 10 o'clock in the morning, wake everyone up with some drumming for about half an hour. We did not see a lot. Yeah. We had one argument Thanks. early on in the house where Jack decided to play blast beats at like nine, <laughs> nine, nine on a Sunday morning. We'd kind of only recently moved in and we were still, uh, relations with the neighbours were still quite fraught. And then, <laughs> and then me, and, me and Jimmy were like, it's, it's the day of rest, it's the day of rest. And then we had, but it, the whole argument escalated into whether England was still a Christian country and whether we needed to respect Sundays yeah. at all. And I, I got sent round to go and talk to the neighbours, wasn't I? It was right. like, you were like, go on, go and talk to the lady next door. <laughs> sure, right. We paid, um, paid some cowboy builders to spend thousands of our pounds turning it into a huge sub as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, uh, the sound sound proofing sound proofing <laughs> just amplified the bass. <laughs> <laughs> the whole house is probably Oxford's biggest <laughs> <laughs> subwoofer. Yeah. Bass trap. Yeah. So it's, it's not made any... No, it has. It has but it's good. It's it's when it was good. It was effective at the party because no one knew anyone was DJing downstairs. So. <laughs> 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 yeah. And how, how are the neighbours with you now? They're loving, right, yeah. they're loving it. No, we, well, they're just lovely. Generally. Oh, right, they're lovely. Yeah. Yeah. On the one, we have two neighbours. Well, on the one side, it's like a fruiterer, um, which I didn't know was a word before I moved in. And, um, and on the other side, there's, it's, a, it's a couple, and they, they, they like, they've been really nice. They give us furniture that they're throwing out. And, uh, Their favourite yeah. band is Gang Gang Dance, which is yeah. pretty cool. They're like super kind of uh, musically. Uh, tuned in, so yeah, they're, they're, they're nice. They've, they say that they've enjoyed the fact that we've been living there. I don't it's it's entirely they got used to They do seem to have done. Yeah. Did they come to the party? They didn't, they, actually, they didn't, but they've come to see because we live with other musicians as well, it's not just us. And they've, they've been, they've gone to see John Paul play, and uh, they've come to like our shows as well and stuff. So mm. we've made some new friends. And there's been some babysitting going on, <coughs> and some curry invites and yeah. things. Yeah. That's sweet. It's yeah. real, yeah, pretty, domestic. Pretty wholesome. Yeah. 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 That's an advert for it. Awesome. Um, so before you even started the album, did you have any sort of goals or anything that you didn't want the album to be? We didn't want it to be the same thing again. Um, and I think we wanted it to be um, less... I think it felt um, a lot in the early days that we were reinforcing the idea of what we felt the band should be. So we had a kind of aesthetic um, and we felt early on that we needed to keep reinforcing that to feel confident <coughs> in an identity and um, I'd say that we'd have a kind of signature sound and I think we felt uh, more now that it would be the right thing to do to sort of strip that away and allow it to be more about songs and um, and sort of, so it's a, it was a freer process this time. We wanted it to be more free and less sort of uh, Get away from the over the overthinking of things. I think we used to overanalyze <coughs> stuff. Did, so did that mean that the album was sort of done it done a little bit quicker than you probably thought it was because you were less restricted? Uh, yeah. Say. Well, we we had we had. I mean, our biggest problem was that I think we had too many ideas, and we had to get to a point where we had to start cutting stuff out and and, and losing stuff, especially when we were in the studio. But um, yeah, I mean, it was done a lot quicker than. It the varies last song time. by song as well, though. So I mean, some tracks would come together really quickly, and then other tracks, we'd have various different sort of um, versions that would kind of either progress and sometimes regress, and then, you know, we'd have to we'd have to make a choice at one point. Um, 
as to which how we were gonna how we were gonna go with it. And like from listening to the album, I, was, I felt like the producer made quite a, like quite a big impact on on the album. I don't know whether you agree or not. Um, how like how did you how did you come to meet him and sort of practically what do you think he added to it? Um, well, he was like it took us a while to to find the producer, and it's kind of it's difficult finding producers because you can't really you can't really try them out. I mean, I don't know. Like sometimes you can, and we did like a couple of times, but. Um, you kind of go on, got to go on what they say and like how well they get what you're trying to do. And he, I mean, he was he was saying stuff about like about the ambience and about like the feel of the album, which we hadn't even told him. So like he really got it. So I mean, he he we yeah he did stuff we couldn't do basically like lots of crazy modular yeah. stuff, which which yeah. I mean, he could create these atmospheres that we wanted. We we wanted somebody to who could execute we spent two days sort of talking to him before we recorded and then um and we talked about uh atmospheres and themes and like colors more than specifics of how to make the record but we knew that he would sonically be able to execute because he has very like luke's got amazing ears and he has um uh he has quite a i was gonna say but he doesn't it's not like a moral perspective on the way to make records but i think he He's quite. Um, he has a quite distinct idea of how to how to make records, and we didn't rely on um, very much post production at all. So, where where he definitely had a big impact was in in forcing us to make sure that the sounds were right as they were going in. So, most of the atmosphere and the, the effects on the record were done at the time; they weren't done subsequently, and there wasn't a reliance on sort of any digital, or very little digital sort of editing or trickery. Um, it was a lot more live, live takes with all of us. A lot more live tracking where we'd get yeah. it right before it could, could get. You know, he's, he's very wary of like overcomplicating it. I think. And I think what he tried to explain to us is the more, the more layers you put on something, the duller it gets. Basically, yeah. The less space there is for the yeah. for the sound to be good, as well. It, and it, it affected where we recorded as well. I think he. Um, saw an opportunity in recording in this studio in Sweden, Svenska Grafon, because it's a malleable space. You can, move, you know, you can change rooms and move things around. They have a lot of um, rare reverbs and stuff. So on some of the tracks, we would set up the reverb live in the room. So we would be doing live takes that are on the final record, and we played it within the. So we were actually playing within the sound of the record at the time. It wasn't something that was manipulated that long. I think it made for. A, um, it made us concentrate more and, and not rely on them. It wasn't an indulgent way of working. It was. Um, it was quite. It, I think it was quite strict. So. When the album was finished, um, whose opinion? Like you, you must have been like excited and like that you had this finished product. Whose opinion do you respect and who did you show it to and sort of? Well, the, the first the first opinion we got was Alan Mulder who was mixing it. Cause he got it straight after it. it came from Sweden, and you know we respect him. He's a real wild man. Yeah, he's, he's a true wild man. <laughs> and so the you know, the last of the real wild men. <laughs> um, <laughs> First time. Um, so, um, so yeah, I mean, you know, he 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 mixes records every week. You know, and he deals with a lot of shit and a lot, of, and he's mixed some, some amazing records as well. So I think his opinion. His opinion, man. Pretty much. Nice. Real confidence boost, I think. Do you, do you, I think it's hard because. I definitely feel sometimes like even if there's people who I know kind of care for our band and, and whose opinion we respect, <coughs> if we don't feel good about it, then um, it's very difficult for anyone to persuade you otherwise. Um, I think that and that's combined with the sort of the uh, the obsessive way that um, we'd work on things. So I don't think we're ever going to like make a record and feel and at the end of it feel totally. Kind of okay and be totally. I don't know. Maybe we will. It was quite. It'd be nice if we if that happened. As it was quite an intense period of recording and um, mixing as well. Um, it's it was hard to get some distance from from the music, and it's only it's only really been since sort of January where I've been able to listen to it with proper, properly fresh ears, and you know then you can appreciate it for what it is rather than you know losing sight of everything everything that you listen to. I guess because when you were 
when you were like in the actual studio, you were listening out for every hi hat and you were like really yeah. focusing on the yeah. detail. And we worry quite a lot. I think the problem that we found with this record wasn't in the writing. The, the writing of the material in the house was was very was very fl fluid and free, and it, there wasn't there wasn't much stress. And then when it comes to doing defined final versions of something that you know is going to be on a physical, you know, or or a record that's going to have a, a lasting presence and it's also going to be the thing that becomes the definitive version for other people outside of the band um, it's we kind of want it to be the best possible app, you know and I think that that's that's where the stress is in so on the completing the record once you have no more control then the worry sort of dissipates more so once we knew that it was finished that we couldn't do any more to it then it was fine and I think now we all feel good about it but while there's still something more that can be done it will always be quite a It'll be like a, a compulsion to keep on trying to fix things. And have, have you lost those compulsions now? Then well, now that it's finished, yeah. yeah. There's nothing you can do about it now. <laughs> 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 Hopefully, you don't listen to it too much and then think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, how's this this album going to work in a in a live show setting? Is it going to be quite different? I think it's, it's always going to be different to the record because you know that's how it is. But, um, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I think it'd be fine, it's just, yeah. it's just learning how to retrans. I just yeah. don't think it's that much further away mm. than the last record. Uh, at, at least in our heads. I, I can hear us playing these songs as they are, at the same kind of pace and with the same yeah, dynamic. Yeah. Whereas on the last record, I can't hear that. It should just bolster like, bolster our set in the way that now we can kind of add a lot more colour to, to, to what we've previously done for, which I think will be. Um, it will be much more exciting for us and a lot fresher. Um, so we'll get get to sort of combine the two records now and see how it works, and we'll just have to figure out as we go along. Mm. I mean, it kind of answering one of the earlier questions as well. I think one thing that we did want to do with this record was like we don't really view the the, the two records and any any of the material we, that we make as sort of erasing each other. It's like we 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 wanted to create a bigger you know, body of work obviously and so by doing that we wanted these tracks to complement the other ones so particularly in the live um, the live set will, it will mean that we can kind of sculpt and be more a, a more dive, like more versatile live band I think um, and I think you know hopefully it will be more and it will be enjoyable for people because there will be different sort of there will be great you know there will be bigger dynamic ranges live I think um, we just want to keep moving forward and doing and different things, and um, I think it makes it exciting for like the, you know fans, and and it makes it exciting and fulfilling for us to do that. We don't want to just keep mining the same quarry. And um, I know that youth movies split up on well, like that's why we had the last. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was going to say it was yeah. like a farewell so party for them. Sending them to Valhalla. At <laughs> one point, it felt it, it seemed like. Graham, their drummer, was actually sort of, you know, holding his head, like, and it was just like, because, you know, it's such, it's such a sad, sad thing that's come to an end after all this time. But some things, like, it, it just, it was because they were across the... Yeah, I think they just want to do other things. I think they've done what they set out to do, and um, they're kind of, you know, being a band can be a cumbersome thing, and I think for them it's become unwieldy, like how many, you know, people split up around the country, and it's expensive and it's time consuming and they all have various things that they'd rather pursue so I, I think it's going to be exciting seeing what you know what the members do now because they're all you know wildly creative and I think they'll make mm. some mm. really interesting things in the future it's by no means like a full stop and what's what's Andrew doing in the future Andrew's doing a project called Pet Moon that is um, sort of uh, I've heard some of it it's pretty it's pretty amazing it's like um, it's it's just it's just himself. He's been doing it on his computer. I think he's going to record it, uh, re-record a lot of it with Anthika, who produced some of the youth movies stuff. And it sounds sort of like if Andrew had been listening to a lot of Phil Collins and smoking salvia and wanting to make pop music in his own, you know, his idea of pop music is very far removed from what actual pop music is. I think, but it's really it's poppy and it's um, it sounds great. And he's also writing um, a book. Uh, and some of it is, I've read some bits of it, and uh, there's, a there's a lot of advice to young bands, or th there's kind of um, 
I don't know how to describe it, but it's like thoughts on the music industry and on making music and how to not get fucked. <laughs> <laughs> so, and, uh, yeah, he, and um, he's, he's, you know, I don't know. And then, yeah, there's some other descriptions of him eating his own intestines and things like that. And weird dreams, you know, he has these recurring dreams apparently where he eats himself and stuff. So there's stuff like that that's pretty dark. It's going to be good. The, the boy has vision. Do you think there'll be any sort of collaborations between you and Youth Movie? Those we might have a dance-off or something. I think a dance-off would be great. Yeah, we might film it and then... You know. I've talked to Andrew about doing some sort of drum programming later on in some of his stuff. I'm not sure how that'll work, but that could be cool. Because he, he, he does spoken word stuff as well. That's that, the that, kind of that extension kind of, of the book yeah. stuff, yeah. It's yeah. not... He's, I think he's... It's, yeah, it's kind of... I don't know, he's kind of figuring it out, I think. But, um, Oh, because we all live in Oxford and we're, you know, we're all good friends, so those kind of collaborations and stuff will happen, you know, naturally. Mm. So. We've, got, um, we've got an all bass extravaganza called Deep Bass, uh, Deep Bass from, Deep Vein from Bassist. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, oh, deep, deep, bass <laughs> deep, deep Vein from Bassist. So, yeah, sorry, I'll fuck, fuck that up. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's, that's happening, yeah, that's everyone, that's everyone. Whoever wants to play bass can just come and, you know. Yeah, I dabbled with the bass. So can I? Yeah, of course. Yeah. 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 Deep vein from bassist. Yeah. You have to it's move to Oxford, though. I'd like it to be an issue, so I can't commute. Yeah, you no. can commute. You can commute. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll see. I'll we'll see you a little bit. Um, um, I've got some, uh, some questions off Jan and Sam, but I think Sean, um, the guy that runs it, um, put some questions up on the forum. Um, so, <laughs> some are nice and who knows. Um, go for the worst ones first. And do you want the worst one first? Yeah. It's really yeah, bad. I, was, I, I wrote it down just in case whether you'd be interested. But <laughs> I. Oh, what is it? Yeah, 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 let's do it. Let's do it. Do you really think you're as innovative and thrilling <laughs> as the bands you name drop in interviews? <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, that's well, we're question. we're a pop band, so I don't think our our aim isn't to be as innovative and thrilling as the bands that we name drop. The bands that we name drop are bands that we like and we respect, and it doesn't yeah. necessarily mean to say that we're trying to be in the same realm as them. We all set we all set out to be, um, in many ways, kind of a reaction to the bands that were inspired by those bands, even though we we shared a similar sort of outset at the beginning. We. The whole idea behind Falls was to make something that was uh, more accessible and more... We wanted to do something that tr attempted kind of universal communication. So and I think it's one of the things that, that makes being in this band challenging and kind of rewarding, I think, when it, when it pays off is, is trying to balance um, innovation uh, with in some small way with, um, with making something that is, a, you know, a song like... I remember distinctly feeling at a certain age that, uh, that it, was, it had become stagnant to try and experiment for, for its own sake and what, at least for me at that time, was the new, the, the thing that, would, that was fresh and exciting was to try and write songs that were, that were songs and that tried to communicate something through a sort of a form, you know, through a, convention, a more conventional formula and I don't think there's anything dirty about that or, or, or or lazy. I think it, it's just it takes just as much work to try and make music that works within those sorts of parameters. It's just a different discipline. I think it's kind of close-minded to just think um, that you know only sort of avant-garde uh, or left-field experimental music is of merit. I think a lot of you know great great music is is incredibly poppy and commercial. I would just you know as long as the intent. The intent behind the music is good, and it's you know, I don't know. Take that for him. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. And um, hunks of dead meat keeps appearing in your videos. Is this a fetish? We are carnivores. Yeah. I don't think it's a fetish. I have always wanted to make a meat helmet. Keep threatening me to do it, but I haven't yet. <laughs> One day. You're being strangely silent. Um, Next question. It's not Next really question. question. <laughs> it, it has cropped up a couple of times, I think, in different capacities. Um, you know. How much uh, did you said that you were going to use tape recordings for the tape delays? Tape stuff. delays, yeah. Did you? We, yeah, we used some tape delays. 
Um, we use tape delays sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. so we like, we like, we like. I think there was a period in the writing when there was a sort of reliance on tape delay and that kind of sounds, and then the record it became a little bit more balanced. Yeah. So it isn't, the record isn't that sound. But it, it's in. in the writing, everything was through, all my vocals went through a tape delay in, in the thing. And I think that um, I wouldn't have um, sung in the same way had, had that not been happening because I, I was able to sort of mask um, my voice in, in, the, in delays and stuff. So, But in terms of the final record, there's Luke, Luke definitely had to, had to keep the lid on the tape delays because I think we, 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 do, we, we like them a bit too much. I think. It was really great meeting you. Thank you so much. Yes, yeah. thank you. Thanks a lot. I think you're probably right with Denzel near the top. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> cool. Thank you. And you guys, where are you heading? Here. Here, yeah. all day. Yeah. And then Here, all day. Some of us go to Paris for um, more. Paris. Who gets to go to Paris? Us two. Us two. How does that decision get made? Well, I'm uh, buying house plants for, uh, for our house, and um, <laughs> yeah, so I'm, I'm doing the domestic stuff. He's going to come back and you're in a pin Yeah. He wants to spend time with his wife. That's nice. <laughs> that's, that's better than going to the picture of domestic bliss right there. Yeah. <laughs>